you've been paying attention at all to the mainstream media over these past few months, you'll know that there is an epidemic of fake news on the internet right now. And as we know, right-leaning voters like myself are some of the most gullible people on the planet. They'll fall for everything and anything they read. But not to worry, because there is help out there for us halfwits. Big corporations are cracking down on this barrage of misinformation so that you don't need to bother checking any sources for yourself. Facebook is one of them leading the charge, putting little messages up on your feed asking if you want help identifying bad sources, whilst Google is teaming up with the completely unbiased fact checkers that are Snopes and PolitiFact to double check any news that comes up on their search engines. Our corporate masters are so kind and helpful, making sure no wrong thing gets through to our little ignorant minds. Whatever would we do without daddy Facebook to make sure we're getting the right narrative? Now, I don't know about you, but once I found out about this amazing system, I realized just how lucky I am that neither myself nor any other simpletons online will fall for lies ever again. And as I was pondering the merits of not thinking for myself, I stumbled across a video from the very real news source BBC entitled Violence at Berkeley Tax March. The video was super informative, teaching me all about how across America peaceful liberals were protesting Donald Trump not showing his tax returns, but unfortunately this group of caring hippies were ambushed and viciously assaulted at a march in Berkeley by pro-Trump rioters. And as I was being enlightened about violent Trump supporters by this extremely Real news, uh, something something caught my eye. There was this blonde girl standing in the crowd of the tax march filming. And even though I haven't had to use my brain for a while because I usually let Google and Facebook think for me, I still had the capability to put two and two together uh, that it wasn't just some girl, but that was me standing in the crowd. And things started to really click as I remembered that I didn't go to a tax march, I went to a free speech rally. And and it wasn't Trump supporters that were the violent ones, but it was militant leftists that came and shut down the event. Now, I I'm sure that BBC weren't deliberately splicing together two different events to make it seem as though Trump supporters were the violent ones. The BBC would never, ever skew facts to make Trump look bad. So, I while I'm sure it was absolutely a mistake on their part, I, I just, I can't let this kind of fake news slide. So, I put together a little list of some more fake news sites that I think Facebook may have missed. <laughs> During the Milwaukee riots, a relative of Civil Smith's took a microphone and cried into it that people needed to stop burning down their neighborhood, and everyone watching CNN that day was left with the impression that the people there just wanted peace and justice. That is, until we all realized CNN had cut out the part of her speech where, immediately after calling for an end to the destruction, she says, we need to take that shit to the suburbs, essentially saying, let's go burn down Whitey's house instead. And CNN still wonders why they get called fake news. Take that shit to the suburbs! Burn that shit down! <laughs> Huffington Post recently had to take back a story about denying white men the vote because the author of the article turned out to be a man severely pranking them. Hey HuffPo, maybe next time you should check if your contributor actually exists before publishing racist garbage. <laughs> NBC anchorman Brian Williams claimed that he came under heavy fire when he reported on the Iraq invasion in 2003. But unfortunately for Brian, his story of bravery fell apart when the soldiers with him called him out on it. Lying about being under fire, where have I heard that one before? <laughs> uh, the New York Times, the epitome of good journalism, right? Sure, if you consider helping Stalin cover up a freaking genocide in the 1930s to not breach any ethical guidelines, then the New York Times is great. Did you know that MSNBC has a time machine? They must, otherwise they wouldn't have claimed that Fox News had their Christmas party at the Trump Hotel before the party even took place. Clearly their time traveling reporting forced Fox to change the location. Remember that fake dossier BuzzFeed published last October about Trump's supposed Russian connections? I imagine the conversation at their headquarters went something like this. Oh hey BuzzFeed, I've got this source that claims Trump was pissed on by Russian prostitutes and that the FSB used that to blackmail and control him. Wow, that sounds completely legit. We should publish that immediately. <laughs> 
You wouldn't really expect a magazine supposedly focusing on popular culture to publish a completely fabricated rape hoax, but somehow Rolling Stone defied all expectations and did exactly that. Jackie's story was full of inconsistencies, but hey, who cares if it all matches up if it's a juicy story, right guys? <laughs> Sometimes fake news doesn't just blow up in the metaphorical sense, where everyone shares it around on social media, but literally as well. In 1993, NBC actually rigged a truck with explosives in order to claim General Motors vans were liable to catch on fire after crashing. <laughs> Some of the stuff that comes out of the mainstream media is just horrifyingly fake and there's probably a thousand more sites I could look at like these ones that are treated as totally real news with no skepticism at all every single day. So with all this fake news floating around, what are we supposed to do? Well, it seems like we have two options. The first one is to stop reading the news permanently. We all know the corporate media will lie to you for profit. Google is filtering what we see. Facebook suppresses stories that have a conservative bent and stops them from trending at all. You may as well just throw out all your TVs, smartphones, iPads, Tamagotchis, and fax machines, then build a huge electric fence around your house so the paper boy can't get near enough to throw the fake news at your door. I personally prefer option two, where Facebook and Google and whoever else could just stop pretending to be the complete arbiters of truth with their stupid filters and promises of objectivity, and let's go back to using our own heads to discern what is and is not a real news story and compare and contrast facts provided by all news sites from all political viewpoints. It's not that hard. So Facebook, Google, and all the rest of you who want to control our news, why don't you guys just screw off? <laughs>